Good morning, preppers. As you know, we do all kinds of stockpiling, medical videos and stuff, security, but there's actually one type of security you need to be aware of, and that is literally personal self-defense, somebody coming at you. Now, this is not to be taking the place of actually getting some official training somewhere. If you can get in somewhere to get some really good training, that is what you should be doing. This is simply just to get you by in the meantime. So I'm gonna show you some stuff that's really cool, but it is not to take the place of going into, for example, a martial arts studio. And don't think you have to sign up for the whole year or a few years to get your black belt. No, they actually often will have little training se seminars where, where they'll show you this type of self-defense. All right, so with that, I'm gonna show you seven things that you can do seven techniques to do on any person coming at you that might get them off you. Now, understand this is not about kicking their butt, not at all. It's about making it so painful that they'll give up on you, hopefully give up on you. Now, when I say that, you need to actually have the mentality, and this is really simple. As a kid that I grew up with, he lived behind me, his name was Tommy. Right behind our house was this kid, Tommy. He had long hair. It was the 70s. He's kind of a hippie kid. Um, but I like to call him Tommy the Scrapper because let me tell you about Tommy. He never, obviously, just watching him fight, never took a class on fighting anywhere. Certainly not martial arts, boxing, MMA, nothing like that. He literally was a scrapper. But I remember he got into a fight with someone and he comes in, he's just wailing, wailing, wailing everywhere and beat the snot out of this other kid so much that at that point, people are like, don't mess with Tommy because he's just, he's just crazy. That's what you need to be. You need to be just crazy. So if somebody comes to attack you, steal your purse, come into your house, whatever the case may be, you need to get crazy on them. Now with that in mind, there are seven techniques that you can focus your craziness on those seven areas and you should actually do very well in giving them so much pain that they'll probably, hopefully, just give up on you. So let's see if this helps you out. All right, so with that, I bring my friend Sam in and here comes Sam. And do not, I will tell you right now, do not get hung up on if that person's bigger than you. Um, in sparring and martial arts, I kicked a guy in the head, in the face, um, who is much bigger than me and broke my foot on him. So I, I ended up losing that one little thing, but I actually ranked up in the, in the whole fighting, but that's good. So if they're bigger than this, and it truly is, by the way, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, because often you'll find that people who are really big like that just try to show intimidation instead of actually being intimidating. Not always. Okay, so the first thing is this, punching. And when you punch someone, you'll see this in the movies, and hopefully you, you've already caught onto this, but when you punch someone, a lot of times you'll see it in the movies, they punch like this, oh, and they'll basically come over and they'll punch where they're actually not even making contact. Watch, I go real fast. And obviously it does nothing to Sam. That's how they do it in the movies. If you're gonna punch someone, you need to picture behind Sam a little bit, and I'm not gonna punch Sam obviously, but you need to move in and punch him so when your arm is completely outstretched, if it does get outstretched, it's like partially behind him. You're not gonna get any power by going like this to him. That's, how, that's not how you fight, okay? Secondly, when you punch someone, it's not an arm thing, like I'm punching you. Even if it is harder, you need to step into it. Boom, step into it and really hyperextend your arm. Twist your torso and you punch them and you punch them hard. This is not, by the way, one of the spots. Even though punching in the, the sternum uh, or in the xiphoid process works very well, it's actually amazing. Here's a quick tip for you. If you ever do punch somebody in the sternum or the rib cage and they're not trained in fighting, when people fight and they've never been trained, they'll hold their breath. <gasps> it's really weird. And so what happens is, go ahead and hold your breath, Sam. And so when I punch him there, it will actually will spasm his diaphragm and it will knock the wind out of him, even though you're not punching him here, which usually knocks the wind out. So you need to, when you punch, practice this, practice this, breathe out and you breathe out as you do it. Now, third thing as far as punching goes, you really move into it, but then also where you punch is key too. Instinctively, we like to hit people with your fourth and fifth metacarpals, okay? So with that, when I punch, I'm probably gonna break my hand. In fact, in medicine, we call this a boxer's fracture if you ever break your metacarpal. Even, let's say a hammer falls on it and it's broken, it's still called a boxer's fracture because there's so many people learning to box and such. Sometimes people even call them street fighter's fractures, but that's kind of disappeared over time. But you'll break that bone because you don't know how to fight. What you want to do is purposely twist your hand this way, and when you punch, you punch using these two. So literally, 
okay? Obviously, I'm not hitting them hard or we're gonna go behind them, but that's how you wanna punch. Really put your hand into it. But this is not one of the locations. So there's your punching technique. Practice that. Get in, really move fast. You're gonna wanna punch through, twist your hand as you do it, and off you go. But here's the spots. First, really simple, punch him in the eye. So in that case, we come up to Sam, we punch him right in the eye, and uh, you may actually not give them like an orbital blowout fracture, which is what happens sometimes, but instead, we'll obviously bruise the whole area. At the very least, it's going to knock him back a little bit and say, oh my gosh, who's this crazy lady who just punched me in the eye? If you're a lady, if you're a guy, they're saying that, then they're probably crazy. But anyways, so punch him in the eye and off they go. Now, punching front on like this works really well, Hitting the nose right here is kind of difficult. So if you actually have to hit in the nose, instead of actually punching like this, you bring your hand up. So in that case, you still actually twist the whole torso, bam, right there in the nose. And watch this, if you miss and hit him in the chin, it actually almost does just as much damage. If you hit it hard enough in either location, you can knock him out. So you come up, bam, right in the nose, you will break their nose and, the, and even their eye sockets will start to get inflamed. They'll be like, what the heck? and you, it should be just enough for you to get out of there. So punch them in the eye, and by the way, we're getting better and better as we go, by the way. Punching in the eye should be like the least of the tricks that you want to do with this. Better yet, punch them in the nose. If you actually want to take another step, you can actually do what's called a hook punch. In this case, this is Tommy the Scrapper. Tommy the Scrapper. You come around and hit him right here. Sorry, Sam. Your cheekbone is actually not a big thick bone like you think it is. It kind of is in the front a little bit, but your cheekbone, it actually has what's called a zygomatic arch and it kind of sits out like this. You can almost kind of feel behind it if you want to do something creepy, it kind of feels weird like there. But if you actually come around, hitting them in the front doesn't work so well, but if you come up to the side with a hook punch and hit that, it'll snap like a twig. It breaks so easily, the zygomatic arch. Impress your doctor. Did I break my zygomatic arch? Yes, you broke it, good job. All right, so with that, you hit it here, you'll feel it pop, and the whole eye area will become inflamed. And hopefully it won't be coming after you after that. Now, another thing you can do is you can cup the ears. You can either do a hook punch to the ear, or if you actually wanna cup it like this, you may actually even burst their eardrum by doing that, but if not, it is gonna hurt like there's no tomorrow. Okay, so what do we have is we have the eye, your least ear worries, the nose or the chin, hook punch to the zygomatic arch, the cheekbone, cup the ear. Now, if somebody's really coming at you, as again, we're getting better and better with these, here's your next one, punch them in throat. Now, the throat, you can actually do what's called a knife hand. Is it called a knife hand again, Sam? Do you remember? Uh, this is knife hand. Yeah, that's a knife hand. What's this one called? I forgot what this is called. It's a martial arts thing. But you can actually punch somebody in the throat like this, if you wanted to, or you can have your hand open and do it like that. And you'd be amazed how fast you'll take somebody down by punching them in the throat getting better and better. So preferable, preferably work from the last one I'll give you and go backwards and really know these techniques. Practice, practice, practice. Don't actually hit someone like I'm not with Sam, but if you can actually practice. But here's the thing, guys. What's amazing about muscle memory is this. You don't actually have to do the action of punching someone to get the muscle memory down. So if you have somebody there, or maybe you have a mannequin, or maybe you have one of those little punching bob things we used to have, basically just practice and do it slow, twist your wrist, do it slow. Keep doing it over and over again, and you keep doing that, and over time, your muscles will actually come into play, and you'll be able to, be able to do it very quickly and take them out. So, number five, the throat. Right here, that's a great way to do it. Okay, after that, we also have the private area. Now, there's all kinds of things you can do for that, but obviously, if the person's close, go ahead and put your hands on me, you can grab me. Oh, you bully, stop! And you basically, you can come up, this is not part of it. You can put your hands out, knee them right there. Or put your hand down there and squeeze like there's no tomorrow. And that person will be in your hands, literally going, oh! Now understand that if the person is probably trained and you grab a hold and you squeeze really hard, their reaction is going to be to clock you and punch you. So be ready for that kind of thing. Don't think they're gonna stand there and say, okay, I give up. You need to be Tommy the Scrapper. You need to grab it, punch them, punch them, hit them, Keep going until they basically, they're the ones that's gonna wanna run, wanna, want to run away. Because the studies show that the more you fight, the more you fight, the better chances you have of getting away from that person. Okay, so we'll say it again. We have the eye, we have the nose, we have the zygomatic arch, we have cup the ear, punch the throat, grab them in the nuts, and then the best one of them all. As they're sitting there and they're still not running, your thumb is your best friend. You ready for this? 
you come up, let's say it's just that they have a hold of you, grabbing me. Boy, you're, you're such an offender, Sam. <laughs> you take your thumb, if you turn this way a little bit, and you put it right here and push and pop. And their eye will pop like that right out of the socket. And it's so easy to do. And the scary part is once it pops out, it rips the soft tissue, the eye's still working. So once it's hanging, looking down, they see you with one eye and the other eye, they see the ground. They're probably like, oh, what's going on? And basically that, again, saving the best for last, if they come at you personally, I would actually come up, punch them in the throat, cup the ear, and then out comes the eye. And they're pretty much going to leave you alone. Now, people, some people have really good grips. And you got to watch out for that because they try to grab onto you, especially your arms. That's where your legs come in, get them in the nuts real quick. Then you can actually go through those vulnerable spots on the face. So one down below, six vulnerable areas up in the, up in the face. Practice and practice. Well, don't practice sticking your thumbs in people's eyes. They don't like that for some reason. But you can pop the eye right out. Now, granted, they can get it surgically put back in again. And let's say crap hasn't, hasn't hit the fan, you can just simply tell the ER, tell the cops, they'll say, hey, if anybody comes in with their eye hanging out, we know that's your perpetrator, okay, that kind of thing. So there you go. So start off with the harder ones better, pop the eye out, grab them, punch in the throat or punch in the throat, cup the ears, the nose, zygomatic arch with a hook punch and punch them in the eye. So there you go. There's seven things that'll help you. And of course, are there more? There are tons more. And that's the whole point of studying martial arts for years is because you'll get all these techniques down and you'll practice them over and over again, including, as we'll see in later videos, taking knives out of people's hands and guns too. Just fun stuff. Okay, keep practicing. Practice, practice, practice. Because you will never get this down if I just told you once, oh, I got this. No, you don't. You don't have this until you practice. Okay, thanks for watching.